Living things are mostly made of proteins. A human is made up of something like two million different proteins and each one is coded for by a gene. This video will show how DNA stores the information to make a protein and how it's used to actually construct the protein. First of all, let's check what we know by the terms DNA, gene and protein. DNA is the long molecule stored in the nucleus that carries genetic information. The information is carried in the order of bases, the four molecules known by their initial letters A, T, C and G that make up DNA. A gene is a section of DNA that codes for a protein. And a protein is a chain of amino acids joined together in a particular order. So DNA and proteins are both long molecules made up of a chain of smaller units. It's important to see this key similarity in their structure as the order of amino acids in a protein is determined by the order of bases in the gene. Seeing as the order of amino acids is what affects the shape and the function of a protein, you can see how a change in the order of bases in a gene, known as a mutation, will cause a change in how the protein works. If we look at a typical animal cell, we can see the structures we're familiar with. We're looking at protein synthesis, so there are two areas of a cell we're interested in. The nucleus is where the DNA is stored, and the ribosomes found in the cytoplasm are where the amino acids are joined together to make the protein. The first thing that needs to happen then to make a protein is to get a copy of the gene made so that it can leave the nucleus and join the ribosome. This stage is called transcription. Inside the nucleus, the DNA unzips at the part where the gene that is being transcribed is found. A copy of one strand of the DNA is made using mRNA. The M in mRNA stands for messenger, as its role is to carry the message out of the nucleus to the ribosome. mRNA is similar to DNA, except that it is single-stranded and has uracil shown as a U rather than thymine. Once the mRNA has been made, it releases from the DNA, which zips itself back up. The DNA has not been affected by this process all that's happened is a single-stranded copy has been made carrying the information from the gene. This mRNA can now leave the nucleus. Transcription is complete. Now that we have a copy of the gene's information, we need to use it to make our protein. The stage where the protein is actually constructed is called translation and takes place on a ribosome. Once in the cytoplasm, the mRNA attaches to a ribosome. The ribosome reads the mRNA molecule three bases at a time. Three bases are known as a codon, as they code for a single amino acid. The different amino acids are loose in the cytoplasm, attached to specific tRNA molecules. These are short RNA molecules, three bases long, that will transfer the correct amino acid to the ribosome. The three bases read by the ribosome will have a specific tRNA that matches them. So CCG on the mRNA will join with GGC on a tRNA, which is attached to a specific amino acid. The ribosome joins this amino acid to the growing chain and the process continues with the next three bases. Each codon on the mRNA attaches to the correct tRNA molecule that is transferring the relevant amino acid for the ribosome to attach. The amino acids form a long chain until the last one has been attached, when the ribosome releases the chain for it to fold up into its particular shape and start doing its job. This protein could be an enzyme ready to catalyze another reaction, a hormone such as insulin, or a structural part of a cell. So, we have seen how the order of bases in DNA determines the order of amino acids in a protein. If there's a mutation, there will be an incorrect order of bases along the mRNA made during transcription, which will result in the wrong order of amino acids being joined together in translation. This will mean the protein will form a different shape when complete, which will usually result in it being less effective. The first stage of protein synthesis called transcription involves the DNA unzipping and an mRNA copy being made. 
the mRNA leaves the nucleus and joins to a ribosome. The ribosome is where translation happens. Here the mRNA molecule is read three bases or one codon at a time and the next amino acid is delivered by a tRNA molecule to the ribosome to join the chain. The complete chain of amino acids finally releases from the ribosome, folds up and can function properly.